Whoa, what? the 14 plus is overheating like mad. Jeez. Apple finally gave us a large screen, less expensive phone, but should you just spend the extra $200 and get all of the extra features of the 14 Pro Max? Well, today we're gonna cover every single difference, starting from the design and comfort to the displays, the new dynamic island versus the notch, the performance, battery life, and more. I've been using the 14 Pro Max for over two weeks now, so I'm excited to check out this phone and right away, the first thing that stands out is the weight of this phone and all these fingerprints that are on this thing already. Personally, I do think that the 14 Pro Max is a little too heavy, so I prefer the lighter weight. And the crazy thing is that the 14 Pro that's much smaller is actually heavier than the 14 Plus. And that is because of the huge camera system on the 14 Pro. We're gonna talk about that in just a bit, along with the stainless steel on the Pro phones compared to aluminum. Now I like the shiny stainless steel, but it is a big fingerprint and magnet, but the plus side is that it is more durable for drop protection. And other than that, all of the other glass is identical in terms of hardness. Now in terms of comfort in the hand, I would definitely give it to the 14 Plus just because that shiny back gives you a lot of extra grip. So if you don't like using a case, that is nice. Taking a look at the fronts, the first thing I notice is of course the dynamic island and that regular notch. You guys let me know which one looks better, but I've been using the dynamic island for a few weeks and I love it now. When I'm running a timer, it shows up there. The same thing with music, it just pops into there. You can see what's playing. You have access to shortcuts, maps, pop up there as well. And then it literally is gonna give you directions. And this morning I had a notification there showing me that my AirPods case is low and I was able to see that. So just the extra convenience is nice. And as time goes on, we're gonna get more and more features added to that instead of just having that regular notch. The other thing I noticed is that the bezels are slimmer on the 14 Pro Max but that's not a huge difference. Now there's a lot of other differences with the screen itself. We'll cover that in just a bit. But the first thing that I wanna do is test out the speakers because the 14 Pro Max sounds amazing and I'm hoping that the 14 Plus does as well. Let's take a listen. I'm so happy that these things practically sound identical because the 14 Pro Max was such an upgrade. So thankfully, Apple didn't cheap out on the speakers on the 14 Plus. Now, do you wanna experience twice as fast load times in Safari on your iPhone, iPad, and Mac? Then download Magic Lasso Adblock, which is an efficient, high performance, and free ad blocker with over 4,000 five-star reviews. And it's incredibly easy to set up, blocks a variety of ads across the web, and now also blocks over 10 types of YouTube ads. So download Magic Lasso Adblock for free from the App Store, or use the link below to receive one month's free access to all of our sponsors' Magic Lasso Adblocks Pro features. Now, just like Magic Lasso, the other thing that speeds up your phone is ProMotion. That is the ability to run at 120 hertz and then slow all the way down to one hertz for the always on display or 24 hertz if you're watching a movie. Now you guys are seeing some slow motion shots because it's really kind of hard to show this off in regular video, but in the real world, the 14 Pro Max just feels so smooth compared to slightly stuttery on the 14 Plus. Now with that said, I think most people are gonna buy a 14 Plus have not tried ProMotion, so you won't really miss it, but if you try both out, it's a big difference. Now the other big difference is display brightness. I have these both maxed out in manual, and the 14 Pro Max looks slightly brighter, even though you think it's a bigger difference, a thousand nits compared to 800 for typical. Turning on auto brightness and stepping outside in the sun, the Pro Max is able to reach 2000 nits compared to about 1000, maybe 1200 on the 14 Plus. But I gotta be honest, I was expecting a bigger difference and I'm having a hard time believing that the 14 Plus is limited to 800 and that 1200. It looks like it's actually brighter and Apple is underestimating it. Now we also have a difference with HDR video. The 14 Pro Max can reach 1600 nits compared to 1200. And looking at it, I can see it's brighter, especially with that motorcycle shot, but for the most part, I was expecting a bigger difference. And once again, I think that the 14 Plus is actually doing a better job 
than what Apple states in terms of brightness. As far as detail, they look the same. They're both very sharp displays. Contrast looks great. And if we go ahead and stretch out the videos, with the notch, I personally think it's a little bit less distracting even though it's larger because with the 14 Pro Max, you have video off to the side that kind of makes that dynamic island pop a bit more than the regular notch. But you guys let me know what your preference is down in the comments. And now let's talk about performance. The 14 Plus has the A15 Bionic with the five core GPU from last year's Pro Phone and the Pro Max has the new A16. Now we're gonna test out the performance. I'm gonna go ahead and run Geekbench's CPU test, but look at that RAM right there. I just have to say with real world use, the last two weeks, I have not noticed the 14 Pro Max being any faster than my previous 13 Pro. The scores are in and we have a difference of 8% in single core and about 15% in multi-core. So even on a percentage basis, it is not huge. Sure, the 14 Pro Max is a little bit more powerful, but I think the fact that this year, Apple added in six gigs of RAM to the cheaper phones, just like the Pros, that makes a real world difference with apps staying open longer in the background. Now, as far as graphics performance, I'm gonna run the compute test here. And both of these processors have five core graphics. Last year's 13 had a slower four core. So let's see the difference. Now, here we go with the graphics and the difference is 25 percent and with that the a16 actually uses a little bit less power to achieve this score and we'll talk about battery life in just a sec now i've been gaming with the 14 pro max and it has done a great job but i think the bigger deal is just having a large display it makes it so much nicer in your hand and with that even though the a15 is weaker in the toughest test which is genshin it was barely any slower. So as of now, you're not gonna notice the difference. I mean, we do have that ProMotion display, so some games might look a little smoother if they're not super tough on the graphics, but I think the bigger deal is if you're gonna have the 14 Plus, well, that is when games are gonna be harder and the 14 Pro Max will start to have a bigger difference in performance. Now, personally, what I'm very curious about is display dimming. Apple said that they improved the thermal performance of these phones and last year, the 13 Pro Max and the Pros, they would dim quite a bit because they got hot. So let's rain in Tutu and we'll see how they do. Whoa, look at that guys. The 14 Pro Max already dimmed down, whereas the 14 Plus has not. Now it has less graphics performance, so it's making less frames. I mean, look at that right there. You guys see that white page and how much dimmer it is. Now I did start with both phones really bright and matching up, uh, and that is what you need if you're gonna be playing outside in a bright room, and unfortunately, the 14 Pro Max, my personal phone, is not doing so well. There you go, now the 14 Plus dimmed down as well. Whoa, the 14 Plus is overheating like mad. So the 14 Pro started getting too hot quicker, but it's maintaining its performance. Now let's grab our thermal camera here. As you guys can see, the 14 Plus is slightly hotter, but there's a lot more heat there and it's spread out more so. And even now there's been a minute after the gaming test, the screen is still dimmer on the 14 Plus. So with that said, if you really care about gaming, go for the Pro Max. And now let's talk about battery life. The 14 Plus actually has a larger battery than the 14 Pro Max. And with that, I have been disappointed with the battery life from my 14 Pro Max, using it with daily use. I mentioned the always on display for a brief bit in the beginning. It is so convenient to have that, but it does drain your battery. Same thing with the crazy brightness with that 2000 nit display. And it's been worse than my phone last year. Now, a few people have done comparisons as far as battery life. The tech shop did a good one, but with those, you're not testing out standby time or having the bright display running. So I wanna do a real world battery life where you're actually using the phone with auto brightness 
just like you would in the real world. So if you guys wanna see that, go ahead and make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications enabled. But from the simple test, they're showing about 30 minutes more so on the 14 plus. And now the cameras, which is probably one of the biggest reasons somebody wanna buy the 14 Pro Max. It has the extra three times optical zoom lens that gives you better quality, the new 48 megapixel sensor. And even though the selfie cameras are identical, there is a difference in processing. Now I'm actually doing a very detailed camera comparison, testing out all the modes, testing out video, and that should be going up tomorrow. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you're subscribed as well. So let me know what your thoughts. Is the 14 Plus worth the savings or should you spend the extra money? Personally, I think you should for the 14 Pro Max. Check out one of those great videos right over there and we'll see you in the next one.